possibly can from as many of you guys as I possibly can. And so to have everyone in this round table like this is uh, a pretty unreal experience. It's a real experience, but I want to kind of guide the discussion a little bit and kind of start off with national programs, national development programs, because most of you guys are involved at that level. And everyone's got different obstacles. Everyone has different um, hurdles that they have to get over in, toward, in order to achieve what they want to achieve, which is you know, creating the best national goalie development program possible. Um, so what I'm going to do is just kind of ask some of you guys to you know, explain where you're at with your program, what your goals are, and what are some of the obstacles that you have. Because I think even though we've got 16, 15, you know, 15, 16 different countries in this room, we're going to find that a lot of the obstacles that we're facing are similar. Um, maybe not so much for the programs that have been around for you know, 15, 20 years like Sweden um, and Finland, but you know, there's emerging countries here. We've got a guy from Mexico who's trying to create what USA Hockey's been trying to create for you know, four or five years, whereas we've got guys from Slovakia that are trying to you know, re-emerge programs that were dominant you know, maybe a couple of decades ago. So I think for me, that's a great place to start is just talk about this stuff on a national level because that's really the essence of why I brought everyone together, why I invited everyone to be in this room and get this opportunity to just you know, be open-minded with the discussion and be open-ended and just, you know, don't be afraid to chime in with an idea or a thought or, you know, an opinion that you may have. Because even though we've got a lot of different levels of experience, everyone's opinion in this room, in this hour, in this moment, is the same, okay? So, um, for me, you know, being a part of USA Hockey as a, you know, consultant or whatever, you know, just supporting what Phil and Kevin have been doing, um, I would, like to toss it to them first and just maybe have them speak about like the path that they've taken over the last three years. I mean, they've done amazing things. USA is a big country. Um, there's a lot of great young talent there and there's some great pockets of development, but there's some areas that are emerging like Las Vegas right now. I mean, imagine how many amazing little kids there are right now that want to be Mark andre Fleury, who's a Canadian. So um, it's just great to kind of see these emerging areas and know that USA Hockey is, is taking these steps and making these initiatives and getting everyone on board. So I thought I would start with you guys and just say, hey, like, what are you guys doing? What is the obstacle that you're facing? And what are you trying to accomplish maybe in the next couple of years? So um, first of all, thank you, Justin. Like, this is incredible. We're super excited to be here and be with uh, the inner room with everybody here. What we face in the US is a couple things. First of all is the coach and we'll start with the coaches. You know, with the uh, traditional coaches will say the player, you know, board defensive coaches saying, I don't know anything about goalies, so they won't, you know, they won't engage with their goalies at all. The other thing is the, the goalies get put out on an island a little bit, and the perception that, you know, even if your parent, parents will be nervous if the kid says they want to play goalie, oh, no, you don't. Uh, and that's something that we really face, and it's hard. And then in order to address that, we've kind of done a couple of things over the last few years, and before it, like, but we've done some things over the last few years. We think our steps in the right direction. But as a federation, in 2007, we hired our first full-time goalie coach, who was Joe Exter. Um, he he was charged with a lot, but his primary role was to coach the four goalies of our international team development program, which then was uh, in Ann Arbor, Michigan. It's now in Plymouth. Joe tried to do. He did. He built a lot. But he really focused on the elite side. We really focused on our 16 to 20 World Juniors, under 18 World Championship goalies. So that was the primary focus of Joe, and he did. He did make some major, major strides. Prior to that, we had a group of volunteer coaches that did camps. They ran camps. Um, JP and I were talking about this before. It was in the springs, but it, it never really evolved into something other than kind of identifying for one or two teams. So what we've kind of embarked on now is trying to create a culture where, A, we, I, we get laughs about that, but goalies are hockey players too. Like first and foremost, it's not like you're a player or a goalie. You know that these kids come to our sport and we want them to play the whole sport. So what we did, we worked with Pure Hockey originally and they created these pads, these quick change pads. So eight U, six U kids come on the ice for uh, for uh, practice. They play goalie for eight or 10 minutes and then they jump out and they go play tag in the neutral zone. You know, and that's all that. If we left kids to their own devices, what would they do? Just like all of us did in the basement streets, ponds, whatever, you play Albany, you play goalie, you'd switch. So we wanted to recreate that in all of our introductory uh, programs, so you'll see some of those pads today. So that was kind of number one. 
And then we want, then we try to attack the coach education. And I've had many conversations with many of you um, that are enrolled in the federation about how you do that with goalie coach education. Because we have a lot of people who they for sure do not want to pay 100 bucks to come hear me tell them how to <laughs> coach goalies or, you know, it's because it's not it. So we wanted to create something that we, was market driven, it was more of a collaborative effort. Justin was a big part of this at the beginning. So how do we get all of the people like this in our country in a room, share experiences and then build something? Because Vegas, which has four times the enrollments in one year than they did, um, the goalie in Vegas is not the same as a goalie in Minneapolis or Detroit or Boston, but we want them to all have those same goals. And ultimately as a federation, we want hockey to be the best youth sport experience that there is. So we want those kids to come there and everything about being at the rink from the entry when you get in the coach's smile on the face to what the siblings were there, like what they're, everything about it, we want it to be the best thing there is. So that's that's like our goal. And then for us, we want goalie to be the best position. You know, we want kids to be like, that's awesome, man. I've got to play goalie. And the parents are like, wow, this is cool. So in order to do that with the coach, we just instituted and we came from our first, I apologize for being late yesterday, our first um, event within our goalie coach development program. So instead of using the term education, we're calling it goalie coach development program and he worked it, we worked it inside our coach education. So for those of you who coach youth hockey here in the United States, you, you have to have an online module for the age that you're coaching, then you have to attend a level one clinic. And then after that, there's your second year, you have to attend a level two, and then it goes all the way up to level four. Once you have a level four, you can basically coach any level within USA Hockey. And then there's a level five, which is in every other year, that is more of a, if you want to, you know, it's like graduate school type, type of event. So we integrated a goalie coach development program that you can take as elective classes. So once you've taken your level one, you can go to a one day goalie seminar and now you'll get your level two. So what our goal is with that, and Kevin uh, came up with the idea of how do we label it? And it was bronze, silver, and gold. Because ultimately as a federation, you know, that's what we're trying to achieve. So if you take your bronze level goalie uh, certification, you get a one up. So within that, we, we want you to change what it actually is. And it's very much in what this here, we, we're not going to sit in rooms, so every time we have a uh, seminar, it's going to end with an actual goalie clinic. So you're going to get on the ice as a group, then you're going to get back in a room and discuss it, and then you're going to have 25 goalies come to the rink, you know, and you're going to get on the ice, you're going to coach those goalies. So that's something that we're going to have instituted. We have 34 affiliates within our country, and we have 34 people in each, in each well, one person in each affiliate who's charged with making sure that these happen, um, and then that'll be That'll start basically in June, and what we're hoping is when we look for reflecting three or four years from now, hopefully four years from now is realistic, that every team in the country, every youth team, has one person on that staff that has gone through some sort of goalie education. So then when they have their, their private goalie coach or someone uh, like a Rob Liddell who they see all the time, but he's not necessarily on the staff, Rob talks to that coach, it's a healthy dialogue, they're talking to the parents, you're engaging the kid, and then at this point, now we're really collecting a holistic goalie development environment. So that's the overview of what we've done with like the youth part. As far as the elite stuff, Kevin has um, quarterbacked that for four years now. So if you want to talk about that. Yeah, so just to expand on a little bit of, of what Bill was saying, some of our, like what I noticed was one of, you know, I'm in this, this is my fifth year with USA Hockey. Uh, original, when we originally started with, with me was the barriers with coaches, just trying to get the coaches like, hey, you don't have to be a goalie coach to be a goalie teacher. You know, use your experience as a hockey player to teach your goalies and what you see and how plays develop. If it's a if it's a two on one and you know the pass is gonna go left or right and that player can one time that puck or just different situations, um, having them explain that to their goalies like you can work with your goalies and still coach them uh, and not be a, a goalie coach, you can be a goalie teacher. So it's what we really started before we started the GDC program. Um, cost was a big one that, that we were dealing with. Um, that's different than some of the federations that are in here. Uh, we, I would get emails all the time in my previous role from coaches. Uh, I remember one specifically from Greenwich, Connecticut, one of the richest, wealthiest communities in the in the, in the country. Um, they would offer free tuition for the goalie that year, free equipment, uh, a one week camp during the summer, uh, one week uh, one week uh, or special training once a week for. For that goalie, they pay for they pay for all this just just to get goalies. And we, you know, some of our competitors like like Thomas and, and Finland, like Phil said, goalie was 
goalie was the position. It was the pitcher. It was the quarterback. It was the, for us, like we don't, before with USA Hockey, it felt like we always, it was goal scoring and, you know, big hits and, and fights and stuff like that. And goalies was just, you know, whatever. It wasn't the premier position where you guys probably have eight or 10 guys that want to play goalie where we would really struggle at each level to really get the amount of goalies we need. We had kids playing on three different levels and different things. So that's one of the major things we wanted to attack was, hey, how do we try to get more guys trying the position and make it a position of first choice, which we talked about with the, the try goalie stuff today. Like, we're going to do it uh, at 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock, yeah. Um, you know, and just fr from our standpoint, like, like Phil said, I thought we did a great job with elite level guys, but then we had to get it down to the grassroots because that's where we were really seeing deficiencies and, and guys, their foundation and what they just, the, the simple things that they weren't getting from a younger age. Um, and that's where this program's come about. It's, it's just done a phenomenal job just seeing, obviously you've seen all the goalies and how good they are and where the positions evolve into and becoming, but to see some of the, the younger guys, just how good they are and how skilled, and I know I never, you know, got that type of coaching growing up. It was just kind of, you know, you watch the watch the game, you watch the, you know, you watch the goalie. I'm from Pittsburgh, so I'm a huge Mark Andre Fleury fan. Um, but that's how, you know, guys that, you know, before would just learn by just watching. Now they're actually getting some some really good coaching, and um, you know, for us, uh, it's not easy. It's a huge country. Uh, there's a lot of, like Justin said, a lot of different pockets all over the all over the country. That, you know, some some of our best players are coming from. You know, Austin Matthews is. Forward. Obviously, he's coming out of Phoenix, or some of our best players are from Miami and, and all over. So, for us, taking this this program that we have now um, across our country, it just keeps getting bigger and better. And we're building with more and more people and more and more uh, coaches around the, around the country. It's, we're hoping that uh, for his mission or our mission of 51 and 30, hopefully, we can uh, attain that. So, and, and the feedback on that, one of the things that we started when traveling around that was wonderful is every city, every rink. There was someone who was really good. You know, there was people, and Kevin mentions uh, Arizona and California, go to these places, and all of a sudden I'm talking to a goalie guy that I'm frantically writing notes because I'm, you know, like this is awesome. But they're they have their one rank, and they they are an accountant, and they have two teams that they work with. So we're just trying to make sure everybody works together and have that encourage that person to reach out a little bit more and you know sit get together more. So. It, we, we are fortunate, we have a big country, so it's, we have, that comes with challenges, but we're, we're also fortunate that it seems like a lot of these people who learn from other countries come here and live. So we, you know, we have that, that as well. So um, I think it's been positive and in a lot of ways much much easier than we thought it would be due to the, you know, the great people that are in our world, which is, you know, we, we all know over here, so. Yeah. Awesome, so then I would maybe want to toss it to uh, Tomas and maybe have you talk a little bit about Sweden, a smaller country where you've had incredible success for you know two decades now. Maybe just talk about your experience creating the program where it is now. And even though you're probably recognized as the top country in the world for goalie 